Okay, this is the normal speed version of our story about asteroid mining. Be sure to listen all the way to the end where I will talk about two of the phrases used in the story and give some explanations and examples. Enjoy the story. The Martians were giants with the strength of 20 men. When they attacked Earth, it looked like all was lost. The Martians were just too strong. Fortunately, their immune systems were not strong enough to fight off common earthly bacteria. Edison's Conquest of Mars is a science fiction story written in 1898 by Garrett Putman Service. The story starts as the war for Earth ends and humans chase the aliens back to their home on Mars. At the time this story was written, the writer couldn't imagine things that today we take for granted, like radio communication. In his story, the alien ships communicate with one another using flags. As laughable as that is, Service did imagine one thing that looks like it will become a reality in our lifetime. On the way to Mars, the humans stop off on an asteroid that the aliens are mining for gold. Fast forward to 2015. A very real company called Planetary Resources is also planning to mine asteroids in the future. They aren't after gold, though. They're after platinum and water. And they have some very serious backers. Google billionaires and Planetary Resources investors Eric Schmidt and Larry Page are betting asteroid mining will become a fruitful reality. Asteroids are minor planets in our solar system, and there are millions of them. The largest known asteroid is called Ceres. It circles the sun between Mars and Jupiter. It was discovered in 1801, and it has a diameter of 963 kilometers, with a surface area about the size of India. In 2014, scientists using a telescope in space made a surprising discovery. Ceres contains water vapor. Water, of course, is essential to life as we know it. As humanity begins the colonization of space, raw materials like water have to be sourced. Scientists are now developing technologies that will allow water from asteroids to be bottled in containers. Water is needed to sustain human life, but it's also a source of energy. Scientists at Purdue University are developing a new type of rocket fuel, which is made from water and aluminum powder. The cost of taking water and fuel from Earth into space to allow further space exploration is enormous. So, finding water in space is a real game changer. Will astronauts drink bottled water from asteroids in our lifetime? And will they use it to power their spaceships to other planets? All right, so in this story, the writer, Service, from a long time ago, couldn't imagine the things that we take for granted today, like radio communication, right? So to take something for granted is an idiom that means to fail to appreciate something, to fail to see the value of something because you are too familiar with it. You are too accustomed to it. You don't notice the how beautiful and how wonderful it actually is. For example, many of us, when we turn on the, on the light switch, the lights come on every time. And when we turn on the water faucet, water comes out and it's clean and you can actually drink it, right? But we shouldn't take that for granted because so many people in the world cannot take that for granted. When they turn on the light switch, the lights may or may not come on. And when they turn the water faucet, they can't be sure that clean water is going to come out or any water at all. So we should appreciate those wonderful things that we have. And in doing so, we can feel happier. And um, especially our loved ones, the people we love the most, we should never take them for granted because they might be gone tomorrow. Things could change quickly. So appreciate your love, 
loved ones now and appreciate their value and their beauty and be with them, right? So don't take them for granted. You shouldn't take anything for granted, really. Now, the next phrase is, as laughable as that is. And we say that the aliens in the story communicated with flags, which we think is very funny, because especially in our high-tech world today. But um, actually, Service did imagine one thing that will be a reality in our lifetime, which is mining asteroids for metals and things like gold. So as laughable as that is, or, you know, there's actually something that's not laughable. So we use this phrase with any adjective to communicate something that is the opposite or something we don't expect. So for example, let's imagine there's a new restaurant that opened up in your community and it's a really fancy, expensive restaurant and you have to make a reservation to go to it and you're really excited about it and when you go there, you pay a lot of money and you realize the food isn't really that special. It's not that delicious. It's, it's okay, but as expensive as that is, it's actually not that good, right? So it's kind of the opposite of what we would expect. Another example is seat belts when you ride in a car. The statistics show that see, if you don't wear a seat belt, you are much more likely to be seriously injured or be killed in a car accident, right? And when you don't wear seat belts, you are putting your life at risk. So as dangerous as that is, still many people don't wear seat belts, right? So as dangerous as that is, they don't wear them. You would think they'd wear them, but they don't, right? So anytime you want to communicate the opposite of what we would expect, use an adjective with that phrase and say the opposite. Right? That's a good way to communicate. Okay, I hope you benefited from these. Please put them into conversation.